welcome back. My name is Britton and this is my channel, Make and Do Handmade. It's a maker channel where I get to share all of the things that I've been working on as far as sewing and gardening and pretty much anything handmade. So today I wanna to share with you what has really been inspiring me and that is some heirloom sewing techniques. One of my absolute favorite fashion brands is Doen and they are a California-based fashion brand that I just really love, just basically everything that they produce. So while I would love to be able to buy any number of their pieces, I really feel like as just a seamstress, you know, it would probably really serve me to just learn how to make quite a few of these things myself. So I got started by teaching myself three heirloom sewing techniques, and I'm going to be sharing those here in this video with you, as well as some of the things that I found that were just super inspiring to me as I set out on this new little sewing venture. So let's get started. So like I said, my main source of inspiration in getting started with this heirloom sewing is Doen. I just love their blouses. I love their dresses. I love their skirts. Um, basically everything. <laughs> Another thing that I've always loved is historical fashion. I love the turn of the century as far as the early 1900s go. I love the Edwardian era and I just think that those beautiful frothy tea gowns are so cool and so inspiring. I actually own one and that I was able to get at an antique store and wore it in my own engagement shoot, which if I can find a photo, I will try to share that. Um, but I have just always loved these really detailed, beautiful um, and very feminine garments. So I went ahead and I found a really great book on how to sew heirloom style clothing for women because you will see a lot of this right now for children. So just very like decadent, you know, christening gowns and first communion or just that type of thing. You'll see that a lot for little ones, but this book is specifically targeted at women. So I really loved finding it. And this book is called Heirloom Sewing for Women. It is by Martha Pullen and it has lots of references to her own garments that she owns, as well as a full section on techniques that you can do on your sewing machine and serger so that you can sew your own heirloom style garments. So the first thing that I did when I got started with this was try to find the correct supplies. So I went to one of my favorite stores in my neighborhood, it's called Art Salvage, and did some shopping in their little sewing section. So this is a thrift store specifically for art supplies and they have some really fun little drawers and nooks and crannies of lace and thread and buttons and fabrics and all kinds of things like that. So I hit up that store first and found some really great antique lace and just some things that I could get started with um, as I started practicing heirloom sewing. So I will show that here, some of the fun things that I found and just looking around that store. Okay, so now I'm gonna let past me take over. I did film myself doing some of these techniques. So the very first one that I taught myself was how to do a lace inset. The next one was something called puffing, which is essentially a gathering technique. And then the last one was teaching myself how to do some pin tucks. All right, so the first thing I want to try my hand at is doing some lace inserts and what I have here is a small piece of just some cotton batiste fabric it's nice and lightweight and so I'm going to use this piece of fabric with this um, synthetic insert right here that I got the other day um, I am super excited to use these really beautiful lace inserts soon but I don't want to use these for my first go at this so I'm going to use this synthetic piece first. Also, it's a little wider, so I think it'll be a little less finicky. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this piece to the fabric and then sit, um, sew some straight stitches on either side here. Okay. 
Okay, so I kind of cut the piece down. It looks a little crooked, but I do believe it's straight. I'm gonna go ahead, I applied the lace here, and now I'm going to cut down the back, and I'm also gonna cut this in half because there's two techniques that I wanna try with this as far as finishing it goes. Cut this in half first. And then I marked a line with my fabric marker so that I could have kind of a good idea of where to place my lace. So I'm just going to slip my scissors up into the lace and just cut right down the center here. So there's that. I'm liking it already. The first one I'm going to do with just a raw edge. The other one I'm going to try will be with a um, kind of a double folded edge. All right, so here's both of these pressed. The first one is only turned under once with a raw edge, and I think that this would have more of a flow to it. It's not as bulky. This one is turned under twice, so it has the seam enclosed. All right, so I'm figuring out, I, I like this on the inside, but I don't know if I like how it looks on the outside, it just, you can really see those stitches there, which I don't really feel like is, I don't know. I just wouldn't want that, I guess. <laughs> Over here, um, it looks kind of funky. This is the edge that I left raw, and then over here I was kind of trying to play with a zigzag, and I messed up a few times, but I like the zigzag on this side when it did work, and I also feel like it makes the most sense with sort of how it blends in with the lace there as well. And it finishes that raw edge and also um, sort of blends in with the lace that's there. All right, now I'm going to try a technique called puffing. So I went ahead and took another rectangular piece of this Batiste. I think I'm also gonna mark with my ruler and marker here so that I can see like, I don't know, what five inches gathers down to. So I put in some gathering threads here and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down. I have the gathers in between two stitches here. I think I'm gonna try to press it down because I'd also like to try doing one of those lace insertions or lace applications on one side of this and see how that looks as well. All right, so I'm applying this lace right over my gathering stitch. I don't even, I'm, I'm also kind of making this up as I go, I'll be honest, because everything I saw said that I should be using a gathering foot and I don't have a gathering foot and I don't really feel like buying one right now. So I guess I'm gonna, I was like, can I do this without a gathering foot? And I thought, well, they certainly didn't have gathering feet when they were doing this in the 1910s, so I think it'll be all right. That looks pretty, huh? I think um, once I apply this, I will pull this side up a little bit better and iron it as well. So let's sew this seam really quick here. All right, so here is that puffing technique, ironed, pressed down with two pieces of lace on either side. I just went ahead and I applied this lace to the top and I just folded the underside in towards the batiste. Okay, so the third technique that I'm going to try today is just some pin tucking. So I'm going to use my last little scrap here and do some horizontal pin tucks going all the way down. Again, I've never done this before, but I can kind of imagine how it would be done, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and iron down this first, I guess, fold here and do a very small stitch along this edge. Um, and then I'm going to go from there. Let's see how it goes. I shouldn't throw too much caution to the wind. <laughs> I'm going to put my ruler right along this straight edge right here. And I will use this fold here as my first guide. So I'll iron that line right there. All right, there's my first tuck done. So after I, I sewed, I think it was, gosh, a quarter of an inch here? Yeah, quarter of an inch. And then opening it up 
This is considered the wrong side. Here's the right side with that little flap and I just iron that down. So I think I'm gonna try a smaller one and I will just put my ruler right up against that seam line there. Is that right? I think so. Here we go. There's some of those alternating pick nut, pick nuts, <laughs> pin ducks. <laughs> Um, anyway, I think that looks really pretty. I think it might be fun if I just apply some of this lace on there as well. So maybe I'll try that really quick and we'll see how everything, all of these techniques look all together. Let's try it. So here we have all of these techniques combined. This is the puffing technique. I actually really like it a lot. I think it's so pretty with some lace insert and then some pin tucks as well. I feel like this is a really good starting place as far as just, I don't know, doing some fun projects. I so hope that you enjoyed this video. I am really excited about teaching myself these techniques. So I'm definitely, I'm gonna consider this part one of my heirloom sewing adventure. And you can definitely expect another video where I do a little more heirloom sewing for an actual garment for myself. And um, I don't know, I'll put that on the docket. Hopefully I can get going with that pretty soon. There is a really beautiful, it's called the Gibson blouse, it's by Folkwear, and I think that that would probably be my best bet as far as getting started with a um, garment that's actually meant to have some of these techniques applied to it as opposed to just finding a pattern and figuring out how to like combine them. So I think my first project will probably be that Gibson blouse. All right, guys, that's it for now. I will talk to you soon, and I hope you have a beautiful week. Talk to you later. Bye.